It is the compositing window manager that refuses to kick the bucket. You are watching Compiz Reloaded Accessibility Tour right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. And here we are on yet another magnificent episode in this series where we are covering the accessibility features within Compass Reloaded. We are using version 08.12. It is the latest version of Compass Reloaded. If you point your web browser to the link in the description, it will take you to cupoflinux.com where I have the show notes for all of these episodes. There's a video with a, an overview and a listing of all of the videos available in this series along with resources, installation orders, installation procedures, and other material for getting this installed on your system. With all of that out of the way, we are going to be covering these nine sections under accessibility. The Add Helper, Color Filter, Enhanced, Zoom Desktop, Magnifier, Negative, Opacify, Opacity, Brightness, and Saturation, Show Mouse, and Zoom Desktop. The first feature in the tour is the Add Helper. And basically, what this feature does, it makes it slightly easier to concentrate by dimming all but the active window. I have Super P controlling this, and let me show this to you in actual use. You'll see I have a number of windows open here, and now what this has done is only the active window is you know, shown at the full brightness, and all of the other windows have been darkened. Pretty neat, huh? There are also miscellaneous options that you can define here, such as the amount of brightness, saturation, and the opacity. Uh, opacity is whether or not this item is transparent with a 100. The window on your topmost window is fully visible. And then the saturation and uh, brightness on these other windows here uh, determines how much the saturation is, how much color and brightness, how light or how dark. So very nice add-on for this. The next feature is color filtering. And with color filtering, you can, you know, change colors for accessibility purposes. Okay, and uh, I'll show this to you. You'll notice I have a very dark theme on here. If I press Super F, okay, it's, you notice it now made all of the colors light. It kind of inverted it. There are a number of filters that you could put into this, or it looks like they're already here. And with the Super F, we did uh, the window filtering, but with Super D, you can do entire full screen filtering. And then they have a switch filter, Control Super S. And it's not doing anything for me. Not sure why that is, but no biggie. Uh, this is a feature I don't really use. Experimentation is key. The next feature in our tour is the Enhanced Zoom Desktop. I have this one actually uh, enabled. And by using the Super key and the Up button or the Super key and the Down button, I can do some zooming. So Super Up or Super Down. And this actually follows the mouse. So you have basic full screen zooming available to you here. Okay, with this you can define the mouse behavior. There is a center of the mouse, mouse synchronization, scaling the mouse pointer if you want that dynamic mouse pointer scale, 
and other options available should you decide you wish to use them. You can define specific zoom options. What a lot of these do, I'm really not sure of. So experimentation is key. Just using the zoom feature, as I just demonstrated, is actually enough for me. But I imagine more of these features here uh, can make this even more powerful. You also have zoom area movement options, focus tracking, and then animation speed and time steps. Another accessibility feature I love so much, and you guys have seen me use this on my show dozens of times, and that's where I press down the super key and I roll my mouse wheel, okay? And it just gives the area that I want focus on uh, a magnifier. And this has some cool features in it too. You have an initiate binding. I just have um, these assigned to the mouse. So super and then roll the mouse wheel for zoom in and roll the mouse wheel for zoom out. That's what button four and five is for, uh, for rolling and zooming. I don't even use a keyboard binding for this. And then I just uh, put in the uh, mode that I want, which is just simple. Uh, the zoom amount, um, the speed and the time steps. Okay, and then you have other options under simple here. Uh, I have the width set at 500 by 200 height. Um, you can define uh, how, how big you want the border and what color you want that border. There's also image overlay options, and then if you want the fisheye effect, you can have that enabled as well. Personally, I just like a nice, clean zoom. I really don't want to have, you know, make it look like a bubble appearing up off of the page. I prefer this kind of effect, just like that the way it is. The next feature in our tour is the negative feature. Okay, and I have this, um, you can toggle a window negative or the whole screen. Let's try that out. Uh, super N for the window. Okay, and it just essentially reversed all the colors. Pretty neat. Okay, and then Super M for the whole screen. And it turned everything in reverse except for my wallpaper. That That's a pretty neat effect. So actually, this could be a way to uh, force your computer to have a dark theme if one isn't available. Although, uh, that does look kind of wonky with uh, <laughs> with uh, everything uh, done in reverse like that. But you know, I don't know. I think I, I think I could kind of dig that one. The next stop on our tour is Opacify, and this one will make windows easily visible by hovering the mouse over them. Want to see it in action? Let's try it. That is Super O. And, um, yep, yeah, I press Super and O. Hmm. Ah, there we go. So, uh, I don't know if I really like that one. But, um, Yeah, I don't know if I'm feeling that one, but hey, they have some options here for changing this. So uh, you have uh, repeat opacity to original values when toggling uh, the delay amount, because you will notice there is a little bit of a delay there. Okay, it is working. Maybe if I were to uh, bump this number down a little bit, maybe it might give us a faster reaction. Yeah, it is faster by bumping that number down a little bit. Okay, um, toggle opacity on by default, only increase the pan opacity if a window is blocking. That's an option that's selectable. Uh, bypass when new active window is focused. Um, bypass delay, window matching rules for this, and then the different opacity levels. Uh, still not feeling that one, but hey, 
if it if you know if it's something that helps you uh, with your workflow, by all means, give it a shot. The next spot on our tour is opacity, brightness, and saturation. So by pressing the Alt key and then rolling my mouse wheel, you're noticing I can change the opacity of windows. I can also define a key command for brightness, which is how bright or how dark that image is going to appear. I'm not going to set that up now. And then, of course, you have saturation. Now, something Soro wanted me to point out is that if you do make window-specific settings or you define your own window rules and you make a new one, by default, the window value is going to be set at a zero opacity. And zero opacity means invisible. So you might want to put that up to its highest value, which I believe is 255, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's 100 in this case. Uh, I know sometimes they've had values at 255. So at 100, and then you put in uh, your uh, window information, uh, whatever that may be. Personally, I don't use window rules, but if this is something that you would need, you would put in the information uh, so that any windows that match um, the field that you define will have those values applied to them. The next feature on our tour is the show mouse function. This one's kind of fun. I have a keyboard command when I press super and K you will notice I have a little smoke trail that follows the mouse. Pretty neat, huh? And uh, let me shut that off here. Uh, you can define rotation speed, the radius, and the number of emitters. I wanted a small little particle thing, but you can have big circles of particles around your mouse, and you also have options for it, such as how many particles, the particle size, particle slowdown, how long the particles will live, um, the darkened background of the particles, additive blending, particle color, and uh, randomly uh, colored uh, particles. I don't want to mess with these settings because if I remember correctly, it took me a long time to set this one up the way I wanted, but I've seen videos on YouTube where there would be a huge circle going around the mouse like this, and I wanted something like this, and I've got it set up the way I want, and I don't want to mess up my settings. So uh, experimentation is key. Play with those values, and you're going to get something really cool out of this. Uh, as I was editing today's video, I noticed um, one of my clips is missing where I wanted to talk to you about the uh, Zoom desktop feature. Uh, now, I talked about the Enhanced Zoom desktop, and this is more feature-rich. The Zoom desktop option does let you zoom in and out, but it does not follow the mouse. I don't have comp his or anything turned on because I have other things going on at the moment, so I just wanted to briefly cover this really quickly. All right, well, that is all I have for the accessibility tour uh, today. I know I probably could have uh, covered some of the uh, items in here in, in a little bit more detail, but I always say, kids, experimentation is key. A lot of these options that I went over today, I really don't even use myself. And most of the things that I've learned about comp is pretty much I just picked up on my own by fiddling with the dials, pushing the buttons, and pulling out a few hair strands as well. Uh, word of warning though, if you do pull out a gray hair, three grow back in its place. Our next tour will be covering the desktop and all of the fun things that you can do with the desktop options. So that'll be in our next tour, and we will see you then. Peace out! Mm -hmm.